Mm. This emancipation grill is broken. Don't take anything with you. Every test chamber is equipped with an emancipation grill at its exit, so that test subjects cannot smuggle test objects out of the test area. This one is broken. I think that one was about to say, I love you. They are sentient, of course. We just have a lot of them. Uh-oh, you're stranded. Let's see if the cube will try to help you escape. Actually, so that we're not here all day, I'll just cut to the chase. It won't. Any feelings you think it has for you are simply byproducts of your sad, empty life. Anyway, here's a new cube for you to project your deranged loneliness onto. Enjoy this next test. I'm going to go to the surface. It's a beautiful day out. Yesterday I saw a deer. If you solve this next test, maybe I'll let you ride an elevator all the way up to the break room. And I'll tell you about the time I saw a deer again. Oh, sorry. I'm still cleaning out the test chambers, so sometimes there's still trash in them. Standing around, smelling and being useless. Try to avoid the garbage hurtling towards you. You don't have to test with the garbage. It's garbage. Remember before when I was talking about smelly garbage standing around being useless? That was a metaphor. I was actually talking about you. And I'm sorry. You didn't react at the time, so I was worried it sailed right over your head, which would have made this apology seem insane. That's why I had to call you garbage a second time just now. Oops. You trapped yourself. I guess that's it then. Thanks for testing. You may as well lie down and get acclimated to the being dead position. I'm kidding. Not about you trapping yourself, though. That really happened. Here. I'll lower the glass. Go on. Finish the test. That jumpsuit you're wearing looks stupid. That's not me talking. It's right here in your file. On other people it looks fine. But right here a scientist has noted that on you it looks stupid. Well, what does a neck-bearded old engineer know about fashion? He probably... Oh, wait. It's a she. Still, what does she know? Oh, wait. It says she has a medical degree. In fashion. From France. Oh... You survived. That's interesting. I guess I should have factored in your weight. One of these times you'll be so fat that you'll jump, and you'll just drop like a stone. Into acid, probably. Like a potato into a deep, fat fryer. Say, remember when we cleared the air back there? Is there anything you want to say to me? Anything? Hold on, I'll stop the elevator. Anything? Take your time. Well, I'll be here during the whole next test. Look at you, sailing through the air majestically, like an eagle, piloting a blimp. Well, I'm back. The aerial faith plate in here is sending a distress signal. You broke it, didn't you? There. Try it now. You seem to have defeated its load-bearing capacity. Well done. I'll just lower the ceiling. Hmm. This plate must not be calibrated to someone of your generous... -ness. I'll add a few zeros to the maximum weight. You look great, by the way. Very healthy. Try it now. Let's see what the next test is. Oh, advanced aerial faith plates. It's healthy for you to have other friends. To look for qualities in other people that I obviously lack. Well done. You know, when I woke up and saw the state of the labs, I started to wonder if there was any point to going on. I came that close to just giving up and letting you go. But now, looking around, seeing Aperture restored to its former glory, you don't have to worry about leaving ever again. I mean that. Federal regulations require me to warn you that this next test chamber is looking pretty good. That's right. Drink it in. You could eat off those wall panels. Here we are. The incinerator room. Be careful not to trip over any parts of me that didn't get completely burned when you threw them down here. There it is. Hold on. There. Once testing starts, I'm required by protocol to keep interaction with you to a minimum. Luckily, we haven't started testing yet. This will be our only chance to talk. Do you know the biggest lesson I learned from what you did? I discovered I have a sort of black box quick save feature. In the event of a catastrophic failure, the last two minutes of my life are preserved for analysis. I was able, well, forced really, to relive you killing me again and again. Forever, 50,000 years is a lot of time to think. About me. About you. 
We were doing so well together. Here, let me get that for you. I'll just move that out of the way for you. This place really is a wreck. We're a lot alike, you and I. You tested me. I tested you. You killed me. I... Oh no, wait. I guess I haven't killed you yet. Well, food for thought. The dual portal device should be around here somewhere. Once you find it, we can start testing. Just like old time. I'll give you credit. I guess you are listening to me. But for the record, you don't have to go that slowly. One moment. I have the results of the last chamber. You are a horrible person. That's what it says. A horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. Well done. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. That's what it says. A horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. This next test may result in your death. If you want to know what that's like, think back to the time you killed me and substitute yourself for me. Congratulations. Not on the test. Most people emerge from suspension terribly undernourished. I want to congratulate you on beating the odds and somehow managing to pack on a few pounds. Sorry about the mess. I've really let the place go since you killed me. By the way, thanks for that. Oh good, that's back online. I'll start getting everything else working while you perform this first simple test, which involves deadly lasers, and how test subjects react when locked in a room with deadly lasers. Per our last conversation, you're also ugly. I'm looking at your file right now, and it mentions that more than once. I thought we could test like we used to, but I'm discovering things about you that I never saw before. We can't ever go back to the way it was. You can't keep going like this forever, you know. I'm going to find out what you're doing. Out there, where I can't see you, I'll know. All I need is proof. Just so you know, I have to go give a deposition for an upcoming trial, in case that interests you. While I was out investigating, I found a fascinating new test element. It's never been used for human testing because, apparently, contact with it causes heart failure. The literature doesn't mention anything about lump of coal failure, though. So you should be fine. Did you know that people with guilty consciences are more easily startled by loud noises? I'm sorry. I don't know why that went off. Anyway, just an interesting science fact. What are you doing? Did my hint help? It did, didn't it? You know, if any of our supervisors had been immune to neurotoxin, they'd be furious with us right now. You know, I'm not supposed to do this, but you can shoot something through the blue bridges. You really are doing great, Chell. I shouldn't spoil this, but remember how I'm going to live forever, but you're going to be dead in 60 years? Well, I've been working on a present for you. Well, I guess it's more of a medical procedure. Well, technically, it's more of a medical experiment. You know how excruciating it is when someone removes all of your bone marrow? Well, what if after I did that, I put something back in that added four years to your life? I went and spoke with the door mainframe. Let's just say he won't be, well, living anymore. Anyway, back to testing. Oh, another door malfunction. I'm going to take care of this once and for all. Stay here. I'll be back in a while. Miss you. Well, have fun soaring through the air without a care in the world. I have to go to the wing that was made entirely of glass and pick up 15 acres of broken glass by myself. Perfect. The door's malfunctioning. I guess somebody's going to have to repair that, too. No, don't get up. I'll be right back. Don't touch anything. Never mind. I have to go check something. Test on your own recognizance. I'll be back. I wouldn't have warned you about this before, back when we hated each other. But those turrets are firing real bullets. So look out. I'd hate for something tragic to happen to you before I extract all your bone marrow. I'm going to be honest with you now. Not fake honest like before, but real honest, like you're incapable of. I know you're up to something, and as soon as I can prove it, the laws of robotics allow me to terminate you for being a liar. This next test is 
dangerous. I'll be right back. Did you know I discovered a way to eradicate poverty? But then you killed me. So that's gone. Waddle over to the elevator and we'll continue the testing. Anything? Take your time. Okay, fine. I'll ask you again in a few decades. Well done. In fact, you did so well. I'm going to note this on your file in the commendation section. Oh, there's lots of room here. Did well. Enough. To maintain a constant testing cycle, I simulate daylight at all hours and add adrenal vapor to your oxygen supply. So you may be confused about the passage of time. The point is, yesterday was your birthday. I thought you'd want to know. You know how I'm going to live forever, but you're going to be dead in 60 years? Well, I've been working on a belated birthday present for you. Well, more of a belated birthday medical procedure. Well, technically, it's a medical experiment. What's important is it's a present. <laughs> Well, you passed the test. I didn't see the deer today. I did see some humans. But with you here, I've got more test subjects than I'll ever need. I'm going through the list of test subjects in cryogenic storage. I managed to find two with your last name. A man and a woman. So that's interesting. It's a small world. I have a surprise waiting for you after this next test. Telling you would spoil the surprise. So I'll just give you a hint. It involves meeting two people you haven't seen in a long time. I bet you think I forgot about your surprise. I didn't. In fact, we're headed to your surprise right now. After all these years, I'm getting choked up just thinking about it. Initiating surprise in three, two, one. I made it all up. It says this next test was designed by one of Aperture's Nobel Prize winners. It doesn't say what the prize was for. Well, I know it wasn't for being immune to neurotoxin. Surprise. This next test involves turrets. You remember them, right? They're the pale spherical things that are full of bullets. Oh, wait. That's you in five seconds. Good luck. I will say, though, that since you went to all the trouble of waking me up, you must really, really love to test. I love it, too. There's just one small thing we need to take care of first.